the dangers of new age spirituality and the new yoga the new yoga tradition in which we in the west are creating for ourselves my friends this message comes from a place really close to my heart for all the brothers and sisters out there that have awakened to to this spirituality to this consciousness a while back you know and are along the journey and realizing that these systems that are coming from the east these ideas they seem to have been warped and they don't seem to quite fit in and work with the current reality in which we're experiencing i want to dive deep into how some of these new age ideas are actually hurting us in the long shot what is needed for our collective evolution right now and really like how can we start crafting and cultivating a spirituality that fits our needs our mind our stories and is the completion of our story here in the west so my friends we're gonna be diving into a lot in this chat but I hope you stay tuned. I hope you dig up the gems in here. This is Reality Files. I'm Christian. We're having a raw philosophical spirituality dialogue. Drop comments uh, below. Also, if you want to talk to me, get the breathwork intensive training uh, guide, that kind of thing. Link in the description for that. Let's do this thing. So I might ramble. I might go off on a little a few different tangents, but Ultimately, let's set the stage here. The New Age, the spirituality in which we're experiencing the Western world right now, comes from these Eastern traditions. Okay, Yoga, Taoism, Buddhism, just to name a few. These are beautiful wisdom systems and systems for what I see as self-mastery, right? When I woke up to, you know, spirituality, to this kind of consciousness and knowledge, I dove right into Taoism. I got that Tao Te Ching out, you know, and loved it. It spoke so deeply, like straight to my soul, you know, um, dove into some yoga ideas some Buddhism ideas. And I want to get to my experience here in a second of what, what kind of happened, what that led to the deterioration that I saw in my reality in a way, but I want to say that these systems are beautiful, but they were, they were built as a guide, as an impulse for a certain group of people, a certain culture in a certain time period, thousands of years ago. Okay. That group of people, right? They needed a certain impulse to guide their evolution collectively to guide them to the heights or wherever they're meant to go as humanity is making this huge collective journey back into wholeness right we've had many guides many wisdom teachers bring the knowledge bring a new tradition you know over the millennia and these traditions come about and match the cultural needs they match the language, the stories, right? The, the world view of the people in that time. But when they're translated into multiple different languages and bastardized into the Western mind, into the Western canon, right? They lose touch with their roots, right? We didn't grow up, you know, like, you know, in the mountains of Tibet, you know, surrounded by Hindu philosophy and Hindu ceremonies and temples and yogis walking the streets and like Sanskrit, you know, for the morning breakfast. We didn't do that, right? But we see yoga out here and all these Westerners really trying to take the yoga path and thinking that that's the end game, you know? And I'm not saying anything bad about yoga. I'm in fact so deeply immersed in yoga that awakening to this is kind of hard right now. But I see yoga as this amazing system for self-mastery, mastery of the functions of the body, of the breath, of the heartbeat, of the mind, mastering your life force, right? But I don't see yoga as the path to the end game necessarily. It's not like the path, it's not the be all end all. Neither is Taoism. They're beautiful systems. Taoism, amazing for healing. Taoist alchemy, amazing for regenerating the body. You know, Taoist wisdom, so incredible as a guide for life. But if you get too deep into either one of those, you actually lose touch with the roots of your own culture and the story in which we're supposed to complete, that we're supposed to conclude. Yes, yoga is a path to you know the heights of initiation, but that was for someone who A, had a guru, who they devoted themselves wholeheartedly to, 
B was in a culture where like money wasn't so crazy. There wasn't such a massive like social economic game going on, right? They lived in a time, you know, where, yeah, it just a completely different, like a whole different culture to be brought up in. The yoga system right now, again, is amazing for mastering, for self mastery, but it's not the be all end all. I see a lot of people getting into the new age, you know, and like there's chakras, there's meditation, there's all these different paths, right? And in this age of Aquarius, we're just out here consuming all of it, taking in some of the esoteric knowledge, some of the pranayama, some of this, some of that, a little bit of this, right? But it's not a system, like real spirituality is a religion. It's a code that you live by, right? And we need to find that. The more we can anchor that in, the more we can anchor in the new yoga for the West, the more clear, the more progress we will see in our own individual evolution and the collective evolution. And it is not about taking these bastardized forms of yoga, Taoism, Buddhism, right? And trying to like morph them into the Western mind and into the Western culture where they just don't fit all the way. Yes, we can take the important keys of wisdom, some of the systems, apply them, you know, experience them. We need to translate that into an original tongue and fit that into our own cosmology, fit that into our own story. Where did we come from? You know, what is our story as, as, the, as a, the Western people, as the European people per se, you know? And not everyone watching this, you know, is from the West, but it's kind of the, the point I'm getting at. So it's not suited for the Western man, nor what we need. I'm gonna give you some examples now, okay? So I woke up into Taoism right away. Taoism, breath, energy work, and was just like reading the Tao Te Ching like it was my Bible, right? I suddenly got very passive, okay? I got weak. I went vegan, I lost like 40 pounds. I got really chaotic in my life. I used to be very disciplined. I used to be very strong. But when I woke up to spirituality, like I tried to assume the spiritual ego of speaking softly, of being enlightened, you know, like, and all these words like enlightenment, all these ideas are coming from the East, okay? And like, we're trying to like replicate them and latch onto them with our ego, you know? And like, essentially like, I fell, I deteriorated. I became less an instrument of God and less active, less vital, less potent in my quest to self-actualization, to becoming the man I'm meant to be, to work the highest service I am meant to work. At the bottom line, my friends, we need to become the man or woman we're meant to be, right? Yes, yoga can help you master your mind. Taoism can help you heal and align with a softer way of living, right? But it is not the, it, it, in a way, it subdues you. It's like this, this warped feminine spirituality I see going on out here. And in my experience, it demasculated me and moved me away from my roots. Here's the thing, my friends. We come from, essentially, we come from the Western canon, the Western philosophy, which is about the epitome of reason, like strength, um, warriorship in a way, like the Greeks, the, you know, the, uh, like all of our ancestors, the Vikings, were just crazy warriors, right? Furthermore, we come, you know, like Nietzsche is almost a prophet for the West. And his whole thing is about your true will, essentially, about unlocking and creating beyond oneself, right? We come from basically the epitome of reason and love through Christ. Christ and the Western canon together is reason and love together, right? And... Yeah, we need to get back in touch with the roots, with our roots, with that story, okay? And we're gonna get into the alchemy of this and essentially the new yoga here in a second. So stay tuned. So, so our lens, our story, what the Western world needs right now. In the Western world, we look at it like there's so many obligations, so many things that we need to like be disciplined about. You know, like making money, trying to make it in the Western world, super hard right now. You can't just like go live on a mountain alone anymore. It's like not the way, you know? Anyways, we're in the age of Aquarius. What is the age of Aquarius calling for? Social reformation, 
getting together, building something new, building new culture, building new society, right? It's not about taking a yoga path into the woods to just breathe your way to God, which I, I personally, I'll get to that point, but I don't even think that's the way anymore. I think times have changed. I think there's a new covenant here. I think there's a new covenant coming, you know, in a sense. So the Western world, what do we need? And like, here's the thing, the Western initiate per se, there used to be the ancient yogi initiates that were all about oneness, right? That were all about communing with Brahma, like, you know, and it was essentially like this ancient memory of earlier times even, where we used to exist in that oneness. But here's the thing, as this new epoch dawned, man got chained deeper into material to liberate something hidden there to literally bring the material up to divinity in a way. This could be kind of deep and esoteric. You can look into the uh, Rudolf Steiner cosmology or the root races to understand a little bit more. But essentially, my friends, the story of where we're at right now is kind of symbolized by the, the Promethean saga, the, the story of Prometheus, who was a Titan, right? Who essentially like disobeyed Zeus, stole the fire from the gods and brought it down to man. The fire from the gods was like heavenly wisdom in a way. The divine fire that burns in man, that makes him more noble. It's that divine spark within. He stole that from Zeus, right? And brought it down to man. Zeus didn't want that to happen because he was scared of man becoming greater than him. Just like Zeus overthrew his father, Kronos, man will one day overthrow Zeus, right? With that divine fire. Prometheus, because of this act, was chained to the to the mineral rock, the Caucasus Mountains. He was chained there and a vulture feasted on his liver, you know, in this like agony, until the day Heracles, this initiate, this initiate of wisdom, strength, and utter valor, came and conquered the 12 tests, the 12 trials, you know, and liberated Prometheus. This story is kind of a, is literally forecasting the future of our race in a way. It's forecasting in the sense that through, by being chained deeper into matter, like we see all this material, we're so deep in materialism in the modern day. There's a reason for all that great pain. All that great darkness gives birth to the highest form of, of light, right? The greatest evil gives birth to the greatest good in a way. You can't have the greatest good without the greatest evil. You can't have the highest consciousness without the lowest consciousness. When the gates of heaven open, so do the gates of hell, right? So we fell this deep, right? In our evolution for a reason. Collectively, we are supposed to reclaim something from here and bring it upward. And Prometheus is that symbol of that divine man being chained to a rock and a, and a a uh, vulture feasting on his liver, the liver being connected to the etheric or pranic body, okay? And that vulture being a symbol of his astral body or his emotional, like his kama body, basically. And, that, uh, and, that, and that's like feelings and desires, that astral body is at war with our pranic body and we're chained to materiality right now. And what we must do is through the, the archetypal symbol of Heracles, which is like literally the demigod of strength, will, valor, and wisdom in a way, right? This initiate. Through that kind of energy, we must liberate Prometheus. We got chained down here to earth. We have all these obligations, all this materialism going on around us. We need a lot of will and discipline to make it in this world right now. Like we can't just go out and go away anymore. Like we have to stay engaged with the world. And furthermore, what is time to learn? We look at the Western like history. We went through the Renaissance. We had all this like new birth of invention of creation. We've had such inc incredible thinkers and creators of the West. And what we must do is complete this story. We must complete this story in the sense of bringing forth our will learning to use our true will right and create to become creating ones and through the process of liberating prometheus from that caucus mountain from being chained to minerals the initiates are learning to to basically cultivate greater energy will and et, like energy into life that is kind of what the west is about right now and i would say that our like nirvana you know like our oneness that we're meant to reach is not through the 
so much. Yes, the breath is a tool to mastering the mind, to getting into magic, to those kinds of things. But at the end of the day, it's about will and reason for the West and love, the fullness of love. But it's about will, love under will, my friends, in a way. You know, so many different prophets of the West have talked about this, but it's about will. The West is about will. We need a way that fits for modern man. It's not about being soft and passive. We need to be strong and bold again. We, we came from this place of insane, savage excellence. We look at like our Viking ancestors, the Nordics, right? The Greeks, this like utter arete, this utter excellence, this savage beauty about us, this wildness. We used to be wolves, my friends. We're pugs these days. <laughs> You know, like which way are we moving towards? We're moving towards like the domesticated house cat, not the tiger. We need to become the tiger. We must invoke the tiger once more, invoke the wolf inside. You see, the dog is cute. The wolf is majestic, right? And it's about willpower. Nietzsche, this is everything Nietzsche talks about is will, finding your true will and not repressing yourself. Same with Carl Jung in a way. And it's, and it's about like not repressing, like all this new age spirituality creates repression and spiritual bypassing. Repressing anger, repressing negative vibrations, repressing like anything that doesn't look spiritual or repressing like all these instincts. You see, your instincts are divine, my friends. Anyone who has acquired great, great wisdom will tell you this, that your instincts are what leads you up to God. Our goal in the West, our goal, right, is to become a harmonious to totality. Meaning that we go in to our instincts, right? And we liberate those instincts and then we order those instincts intelligently. We bring those instincts into order, but we don't cut off pieces of ourselves. We realize that all of our instincts are there to create this unique masterpiece, this har harmonious totality in which we're supposed to become, right? But we can't do that. If we're just trying to follow these old gurus for an old time period in a, in a tradition that's been bastardized and lost in translation as it's brought to the West, we can take the wisdom from there, right? But we have to look at our own story. Look at what our reality is calling for. Look at what works in our reality and learn to bring all of that into our harmonious totality. And this is the cultivation of, a good, of the good religion, of the new religion, of the new yoga for our modern day, okay? It's through instincts, it's through willpower, okay? And it's about bringing ourselves into a harmonious totality. So the yoga of the modern day, my friends. Yoga. How deep are we into this video? I don't know, whatever. Yoga means union, okay? Union with God. In the old epoch, 6,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, when the Vedas were bringing the knowledge over to India, right? When the Rishis were there, when the, when the ancient Yogi Christs were awakened as these great gurus, right? And still there are some today, you know. They were seeking union with God through the mind, okay? They were seeking union with God through mastery of the mind and life force control, essentially through the breath, okay? And this still applies, but it's not everything, okay? They were seeking union with God. That's what yoga is. And I wager that in the modern day, in the West, there's a new way of union with God. There's a new way to be found. The breath, that kind of energy work, those kinds of mystery teachings, super important, okay? But this new yoga, right, is ultimately about your will and the cosmic will or the cosmic mind and finding the space in between them. We're gonna get into a quick discussion on alchemy, on the process of solvet coagula, on how we can merge two opposites into a harmonious single new element. Let's do it. Yoga. So union with God, we used to do it through the breath, but then like Rudolf Steiner would say, this is a little bit out there, but 
The wind, the air, has lost its soul. The etheric energy on Earth has gone down as we've descended deeper into the Kali Yuga. And as the epoch turned, right, and we got deeper into matter, deep, as we got chained to the Caucasus Mountain, per se, right, we lost the ability to, to immediately or like really systematically unify with God just through the breath. There's something more, something else to be added here. And that's through will, okay? This is where Eastern spirituality becomes very dangerous in the West. Mark my words, Eastern spirituality can become very dangerous in the West because it suppresses desire, okay? In my mind, from what I've seen, my friends, desire can come from a frantic, egoic place of attachment, but there's also divine desires of the heart. And those divine desires of the heart are there for your fuel and your compass, okay? Desire, it equals divine. My friends, you were given your instincts, you were given your desires for a reason. You are meant to master them, but also let them show you the harmonious, unique whole in which you're meant to be. Your desire is your fuel into life. If I didn't desire to A, you know, like share this message, share the truth as like from the deepest part of me. If I didn't desire to be sovereign and, and, and financially independent and not work for someone else, there's no way in God's name I would have, have made the last thousand videos I made on this channel. Zero, right? <clears throat> desire and willpower together create manifestation. Mark my words, <clears throat> we are here to become creators. We are here to become creators, my friends. This is the new battle cry. This is the cry of spirituality in the West. Like, we are here to become a creator, okay? To become a creator, you need some ego. You're gonna make errors. You're gonna be willful. You're gonna be forceful, but then you're gonna go through pain and you're gonna let go of those errors in, in ways. You're gonna learn how to unify. You're gonna learn how to listen more. Okay, we're gonna talk about becoming a creator. First off, you need to listen to your desires, my friends. Like right now, <clears throat> I desire to liberate some of the brothers around me and so that we can, I desire to liberate the brothers around me so that we can be in communion more, really start building culture and whatnot. But to do that, we need to like create a business or some kind of revenue income stream to liberate us as a team. Right? That's a deep desire of mine, something I'm consistently working towards, putting my will towards, you know, and like new age people would be like, oh, you got to let go of attachments and let go of desire. It's like, I really want it. I'm not attached to it, but I want it and I will will it with all of my will. You know what beauty is to me? You know what beauty is to Nietzsche? When you will something with your whole will. with your entire will, with all of yourself. You know what Nietzsche says? <clears throat> we didn't, desire is not to be ousted. What we must do is return to innocence in desire, like the child. He's innocent in his instincts. He does what he wants to do so fully. Like I remember being a kid and like, it's like, I wanted to dig a hole. I dug a 10 foot deep hole in my backyard. I'd wake up and I'd do that for hours every morning. And I just wanted to do it with like my whole will. That's beauty. When we will something with our whole will, that's life, that's vitality, that's strength. And if we worship life in its highest form, you know, isn't that the worshiping of God in its highest form in a way too? When we worship that life principle, not that which is subdued, like, you know, con like convalesced or, you know, warped in some way, but willing with your whole way, will, innocence in desire. Innocence, my friends, in your desire. You got to realize that you are here to learn to become a creator. That is literally the karma of the West. You must learn to become a creator. In order to become a creator, my friends, you got to want to create. And you can't start creating if you don't realize that this life, this reality, it's your sandbox to experiment in. Guess what? God understands you're going to make mistakes. That maybe you're going to will something that maybe wasn't for the best for you or for others. But as you progress, my friends, as you grow in spiritual maturity, right? As you grow, your desires 
start to unify with God's desire for you. And what God desires for you is your most actualized state, living in alignment with your highest well-being and your highest service, your deepest gifts, giving fully to the world, right? That is a divine desire, right? How we find that is a process of using our desire where we stand, our instincts, right? And learning to listen. <clears throat> For example, your will. Let's say your will is to make money so you can liberate yourself and your loved ones into abundance so that you can really dedicate to the path you want to follow, whether it's like a Miyamoto Masushi, Masashi path or yoga or, you know, esoteric initiation or, you know, like living a fucking healthy, happy, beautiful life full of adventure, travel. Like my friends, this world is a playground. What do you want? I ask people, I ask every person I get on a call with, I ask, what do you want? So few can give me a straight answer. So few are in touch with their instincts with that will to glory per se, with the greatness that they could have. We gotta want it first. Like you'll never be great unless you want to be great, right? <laughs> like Maslow asked his class of students, like who here is gonna be the next Mozart? Who here is gonna create the next be like great piece of art or something? And like no one would ever raise their hand. You know, that used to be so different a few hundred years back, a few thousand years back. But your will, my friends, what do you want, right? And to learn to charge your will and go after what you want. That's discipline, right? I want to master my mind right now really badly. I meditate an hour when I wake up in the morning and an hour at sunset every day. Why? Because I have a deep burning desire to become the master of my mind and my life force energy. <coughs> so that's my will, okay. I also have a desire to create abundance, like I was saying, right? And then all of a sudden, like YouTube starts waning and ebbing on me. It's not going right, you know, like, and like old me would have just forced that, would have just been too willful, would have been too far on this polarity, right? But new me understands this, this law going on right here and the new yoga that's supposed to be created, that's called flow. <coughs> the new me realized that wow, things are dying and transforming in my life. I need to hold the space for a new vision to come in, a new vision for how that wealth can manifest. That is still my will is to create that kind of wealth, that create that kind of abundance for, for myself and community, right? <clears throat> but I had to let the cosmic mind speak, okay? And the cosmic mind speaks, you know, when we listen, when we surrender, Right? So there's this polarity between discipline and will and surrender and listening, right? Between the feminine and the masculine. We see people who are overly masculine, right? <clears throat> These super hyper busy entrepreneurs on Instagram, always hustling. Hold on, I need some water. <clears throat> always hustling. <clears throat> always burnt out, never like enjoying or being with life, right? And like, you think, oh, they have a strong will. It's like, no, they have a frantic mind and a lot of business going on. They don't actually know what their will is because if they had a strong will, they could ripple that will into reality with every action they take because they're taking action with alignment to infinite intelligence, infinite intelligence or the cosmic mind and the will of God, united with their will and strong vital energy right? That they work massive magic. One action into a line in alignment ripples through the sands of time, right? But to get into alignment, we must listen to our heart. We must listen. God speaks through the silence, right? When we just let everything go and we get into that Shiva principle within, when we get into that inner stillness, right? The cosmic mind speaks through omens. Things are going to ebb and flow in your life. Can you listen to that? Can you roll with the punches per se, right? Can you pray, you know, and listen to what God has to say? Can you listen to the whispers of your heart, right? Can we stop bypassing how we feel, trying to get what, what we will? We see this with the, uh, you know, the law of attraction community. Like 
discounting how they feel and where they're at and what's coming up for them and just always trying to hold on to the vibration of what they're creating. Yes, there's virtue in that, but at the same time, what's coming up for you, what's in your heart, how you're feeling is a notification from the self, from God, right? About are you living in alignment with yourself? Okay. So essentially, <clears throat> through this alchemical process, which I'm about to elaborate here in a second, which is solvit coagula, you start to, you pick a will, okay? You pick a will to go do something. As you progress towards that will, you listen to the cosmic mind. You surrender, you give up that will, in a sense. And you learn to listen and create this living relationship with God all around you. And at the ultimate point, at the ultimate like alchemical perfection, the gold of this union is this perfect flow with God in the sense that reality is always communicating to you how to move and your will is in alignment with that communication and that your true will runs wild and free, that you, fill up, that you feed on will itself, right? And that is love. That is the fullness of life and love right there. Like your will gives you the freedom to love. And when you're in awareness of the cosmic mind, when the omens are dancing all around you, like, man, I was going through a really tough time just the other day, having this low point, letting go of a lot of things, going through heartbreak, you know, doing some breathing, doing some transmutation up there on the mountain and sitting and feeling with everything. Like all of a sudden, like all the omens, all like the alignments, all the communications from God, I just became so, so profoundly aware of it, so profoundly aware of a higher picture, like God's mind entered into mine for, for a moment, right? And I realized like, damn, you know, like this is so incredible when we access that point of relationship to God, where our earthly actions and our earthly will, we allow that our instincts to fully sing their song, to fully will with our whole will, to have innocence and desire, right? But yet to be where we are and listen, we find this flow of higher awareness, of connection of the inner to the outer. This is what yoga is, union with God. Can we unify the inside with the outside and the outside with the inside and make the two into one, right? We can do that through breath, but I think what is called for, what is asked for in this time is to learn how to do that with your will and your whole being. That is the union that is being asked for, okay? How do we do that, okay? You can go watch this. I have a few videos on the Trinity of Manifestation. I want to start diving into the Trinity of Manifestation more. So drop a comment or hit me up um, if you want to see more on the Trinity of Manifestation. Really powerful videos I was making about a year ago. There's a whole playlist. And essentially, the Trinity of Manifestation, my friends, is this alchemical process of solvet coagula. Solvet coagula means to create a solution, to create a coagulation or a crystallization, right? And then to solve means to dissolve it and remove the impurities. Essentially what you're doing is you're creating a crystallization of two, two opposing elements, two polarities, bringing them into one, creating a solution, a new compound, right? And then dissolving that back down and ref and removing the impurities. If you watch my previous video on Shiva and Shakti, that is the process of solvet coagula in a way, okay? So how this works with our will. The first thing I'm gonna tell you, my friends, a lot of us have been indoctrinated into this new age spirituality. And the first thing I wanna to say to you is it's okay to want and will. It's okay to will with your whole will. That's what makes you strong. That's what leads you and progresses you on the path towards your highest self, towards the full actualization of your potential, to being the man or woman, the king or queen you are meant to be, is to find your will and let it sing. There's a process you can go through to getting clear on your will and the song of your heart. You can, uh, there's a link in the description to talk to me one-on-one if you wanna go deeper into that. I have a full guide on it. But essentially, <clears throat> ideally, if you're watching this far, you kind of have an idea of a will of the whispers of your heart. And if you do not, get still. Get still and see what the inner voice 
is calling for or has been calling for for a long time. Maybe it's to move, maybe it's to create, maybe it's to let go of something, whatever it is, you create intention. That's where we start. This is the process of alchemy. Okay, you have a will, okay? The center of the sun. We create intention, okay? Intention being what it, what it is, what exactly is our will? And how do we want to go about it? What is the feeling about life? What is the experience? What is the reality we are creating, right? Intention is often in the feeling, the feeling about what you want to happen, okay? And then we go up to attention. This is where we crystallize form, okay? In attention, this is where action takes place. This is where crystallization. My friends, I'm telling you, it's okay to dream. It's okay to take on a role. It's okay. Like oftentimes in spirituality, like we don't want to become a boxer or like become a coach or like become something. But the thing is, is you must crystallize different forms, different identities per se, in order to really actualize your will, right? And then you let it dissolve. So I'm gonna give you some examples of this, but intention, what is your will? Then you give it attention, right? Let's say your will is to um, manifest $5,000 a month with your business, right? Give it attention. What do you do? You study things, you study people, you learn from mentors that are making five grand a month through your, through your business, right? You give it attention, you put out prayers, right? Like you tap into some Napoleon Hill or something or James Allen, right? And you really study, you really get into the frequency of living into that reality. You give it attention, you act, right? You work on your business because you have desire and intention, right? Desires down here. Manifestation comes through the union of desire and will. The stronger your desire burns from the truth in your heart, right? The stronger your will will be coupled with it, the stronger your, your powers of manifestation. Furthermore, your powers of manifestation are directly tied to your electric vital charge, your vital magnetism, right? If you're not breathing properly, if you have low potency, you have very little willpower, very little magic. That's for another video. Let me know if you wanna go into that. But essentially, <clears throat> right, we have desire and we have intention. That's the fuel. Okay. And to give it attention, we act on it. We program ourselves into that reality. We assume that role. We become a coach. Like I didn't, you know, create a successful coaching business until I really assumed the identity and let myself be okay with it that I'm a successful coach, you know, that serves high amounts of value and for exchange receives high amounts of value. You can, I, you can crystallize something, my friends. Crystallize something, become something, do something, want something, be strong. Spirituality, I've seen demasculate, literally weaken our entire, our entire collective, you know, conscious community. We need to be strong again, right? And in order to do that, we must learn how to use our will in alignment with God's will. But to do that, we must make mistakes. It must be okay to make mistakes, to become something. And then no tension. So we give it intention, then we go into attention, and then we let it wane. Okay, as the rhythm ebbs, the law of rhythm coming in again, as the rhythm ebbs, right? Let's say all of a sudden you, you, did, you went to the gym, that was your intention, you went to the gym for three weeks, right? And then you take a week off, you go no tension, you dissolve, you surrender, you let go, you breathe, you return to your place of, you know, already whole, already full, already worthy. Like we think we're worthy of all these things, but that, that in truth, you're not. You gotta earn your shit, my friends. Welcome to Earth Plane, you gotta earn it. You gotta earn every step, you know? Like, yes, we're all created equal in the eyes of God, but here on Earth Plane, you know, there is a hierarchy, a hierarchy of value. Like, what are you earning for yourself, you know? And we go into no tension where we dissolve and we let go. And this is where we dissolve. And then we remove impurities at our zero point. We remove the impurities and then we set a new intention, okay? So I went to the gym for three weeks and I took a week off and I dissolved and I let go of that, 
right? And then I set a new intention. And after I removed the impurities, I realized like, wow, this diet and this system at the gym wasn't working for me. That was hurting me. Or like, you know what? I could do this better at the gym. Or you know what? Like I want to add this element to it. Or you know what? Like I want to start working out uh, longer or more intensely for shorter amounts of time. You refine it, right? And then you set new intention. You act on it. You refine. You let it go. You refine it. Okay, going through this over and over again, you actually get good at letting go of shit. Most people who stay so busy their whole entire damn lives and are always frantic and move with no power, it's because they don't know how to die. They don't know how to go into no tension. Look up Reality Files No Tension. I have a whole video on it, right? So we learn to let go of something, to let go of the form. You know, if we're super identified with this busy entrepreneur on Instagram that we've been for the last five years, and we've never learned to let it go because we don't do it on a monthly basis with the moon cycle, well, it's gonna be really hard to let that go. But once you can let it go and you can actually come back to it with new eyes, fresh vision, remove the impurities and set new intention, you'll be three times more successful. You're gonna be going from lead to gold. This is in everything, my friends. And in this process, in this no tension, you're learning to listen to the self, to the heart, to what God asks, you're getting your marching orders when you're in no tension, when you're at the bottom of the triangle there, right? You're getting your marching orders when you're at that zero point. You're creating intention and then harnessing your will and driving after what you want, giving it attention and then letting it go again, right? And you see how you're creating this relationship where you like you speak with God or you speak with the inner self or the higher self or whatever you want to call it. Then you find your true will, your true desire. You let that thing sing. You let your true will burn, right? You give it attention. You dedicate yourself to it. You live it. You literally become it. That's, it's a role you're assuming. Then you let it go, okay? This process that I just described there, my friends, is the process of alchemizing your will. And the more you do it, here's the thing, my friends, this is why we all need to learn magic. We all must learn magic and how to use our willpower, right? Or else we will always be chasing what we think we want, or we will always be chasing, or like, I guess we'll always be like resigned and feeling like a victim in our life because we have no willpower, we have no magic, right? But by learning magic, A, the, the faster you learn magic and to use your willpower, the faster you can see what the fuck you don't want and what not to do, right? <laughs> like. Like if you could use magic and instantly get yourself a million dollars and like 10 beautiful voluptuous naked women around you and you have the time of your life for like five months, right? After that, you're gonna be feeling so drained and being like sex is stupid if it's not sacred. You're gonna be like, you know, all this is a huge distraction. I actually wanna go do something. I wanna go create something, you know? Like, and then you're gonna realize like, oh, wow, I thought I wanted all that, but I really didn't want all that. But if you never get magic and you never get your willpower under your control, well, then you're never going to get what you want. So then you're always going to be chasing something your whole life. And you're never going to listen to the cosmic mind or get deep enough with the true self to realize the true will, right? This is the, this is the new yoga of the West, my friends, I'm talking about right here. So you need to learn magic, right? To learn magic, you need to master your life force control. You need to master your breath. This is why yoga path is so powerful at the beginning. Not the dogma of it, but the system of it, right? You need to master your will. Go and attack after what you want and let God speak through your heart's desires. You know, I desire freedom, community, ancient truth, mystery schools, and maximum splendor. And I'm going to let myself dream those dreams, my friends. Because I know that I'm a creator and this life is for me to learn to create. Nothing else. Become a creator and become a creator in union with God and the cosmic mind. And the more you use your will, the more you use your discipline, the more you get what you want and realize, you know, deeper aspirations, greater dreams. My friends, there's no such thing as dreaming big, okay? There's only such thing as dreaming truly. Your true dreams, your true will is fucking huge, but you're even scared of it. You call it dreaming big or a long shot, you know, but it's like, Wow, if you started developing your will and your magic, you'd be surprised what's within your reach. 
what's possible, especially when your will and your magic is in alignment with divine mind, divine thought, infinite intelligence, God's plan down here on earth. When you're bringing those two together, you're reaching a high level of spiritual development. And as you get closer and closer to it, you're actualizing what Christ brought in the new covenant, which was like, you know what? Fuck the old laws, fuck the old, old tablets of Moses. You know what? We got a new law, okay? And that new law is love God with all thine heart, soul, and being, and love your brother. And But he embodied the new law. How did he embody the new law? He said that God is in me and I'm in the Father. That God's will lives in me, is unified with my will and my love, right? And that I'm an individual down here, but God is working through me. And that is what I want as well. His will and God's will, one and the same constant communion with the divine mind. He was the symbol of that new covenant, right? And to find that new covenant, you must use your will, right? You must actualize and become a harmonious totality and develop your relationship with the divine, develop your wisdom, develop your faith, develop your piety, develop your surrender, develop your ceremony per se. And the more you can combine your ceremony with your will, the more you can be listening and acting simultaneously, the closer you are getting to the new form of yoga that is required in the West. My friends, the new form of yoga that is required in the West has to do with being a creator, about actualizing your will, right? About, about union with God, not in a passive way, but a very active way, right? That is rooted in the story that which we came from that is true to our roots, that, that, that like we were, we were beautiful savages back in the day, my friends, and we need to go back into that right side Dionysius part of our mind, right? That, that beautiful savage excellence, that wild part of ourselves, you know, and bring it into union with the left side of our mind, which is so overwhelmed right now, which is like analyzing everything and overthinking everything and worrying and writing and sitting over our fucking phones and computers and all this shit, right? We need to bring those two into balance, right? We need to bring our will and God's will into balance. We need to bring our breath and the true breath into balance. We need to bring our eyes and the eyes of our heart into balance, the mind and body into balance. This is the yoga of the West, my friends, and it is union in all parts, but it's coming from the deepest place inside of you, and that is your will. That is your fire that Prometheus stole from the gods, my friends. Your divine spark and your divine will inside of you, you must find that. Remember, desire is divine, right? We must have innocence in our desire and learn to will with our whole will. We must learn the alchemical process of solvet coagula so we can turn the lead of our base desires, our base instincts, our base soul, which is our lead. I forgot to mention that. You must go through the wheel of alchemy, through the, the trinity of manifestation over and over and over and over until your lead desires, your lead base instincts are transmuted and refined into the most noble of all elements, into gold, right? Into the philosopher's stone, into the immortal self per se. That is the dangers of new age spirituality and the true spirituality being asked of, of us in these times. Last point here is that the truth, that kind of spirituality, that kind of new union, that kind of new yoga per se, is seen. Like if we look at some of the big movements on the interwebs right now on YouTube, in terms of spirituality, we have a lot of attraction going on, a lot of it. We have like Abraham Hicks going out there talking. and. She is bringing like that law of attraction narrative, all these law of attraction coaches. For the most part, they're really centered on your will, right? They need to learn how to listen, to let the heart sing its song, to not repress anything, you know? There's a lot, it's a half truth, but it's a half truth because it is the necessary impulse towards the evolution our collective must see. That impulse must be harnessing our will, putting love under our will, and learning to be creators, kings and queens out here. That is the, the society we are meant to build, right? After this fallen age of the West. So we see it already happening. We see all these prophets, you know, on the light and the dark side, all through our ages. Heraclitus talking about the logos and the divine fire that burns and change. And, you know, we have Goethe and we have Nietzsche 
talking about these kinds of things, you know, and it's just, you know, it's so written into our story. And that's the main part of why I'm making this video is like take from the East, take from yoga, Taoism, Buddhism. You know, I do. I love those systems. I live by them right now, but I know they're not the end game and all right. Furthermore, I know they're just a step. They're a stepping stone, a thing I must practice and do to develop a certain key inside of myself, a certain level of intention, you know, power, life force control, mental control, so that I can start using my will actually, so I can start communing with God in a more real dynamic way, so that I can start living into who, I am, who I'm meant to be in the path I'm meant to travel. My friends, we're all pioneers out here. Pioneer away. Thanks for being here. This is Reality Files. I'm Christian. Please hit this that like button. We dove into it today. Again, um, if you guys want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, link in the description where you can apply for the Breathwork Intensive Training Program. Also, the Breathwork Group Training Program that is starting here in December. I would love to have you guys there for that. Wow, we dove in. If you ever watch this again or take notes or something, drop time codes, please, of where we like really dove in different parts. Like this video, share it with someone you think it will impact, share it wherever you can on the interwebs. It's the only way my content gets found right now, which is unfortunate, but it's just where we're at, you know, and I'm unattaching from that. Hell yeah, thanks for being here, my friends. Thanks for being you. May we actualize the evolution, the impulse that we are destined to actualize, that we are meant to. And may we no longer get hung up in these traditions that once worked so well, still hold deep wisdom, but aren't for our day and time necessarily. May we learn to take what works, to remove what doesn't, and find and cultivate our own yoga, our own way of union. And I think this blueprint I just laid down is the foundation of that. Peace out, brothers and sisters. Have a beautiful one. Wherever you are in space and time, blessings.